on the computer. Right. Should be recording. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining. Um, I'm just going to mute everybody, actually, if I can still do that. Um, do you all know how to unmute yourself if you yeah. want to ask it, any questions? And unmute, unmute. If you if you just wave your hand, I'll unmute you. Or, All right. <laughs> um, or just in the top of your wee screen, um, if you have your mouse wiggle about on in the corner of your wee icon, uh -huh. and it, you should get it should come up with mute or unmute. I've got leave. Oh yes, I can see it here. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes. So you can just click on mute and then if you want to ask any questions, just unmute yourself. It's just so that there's not any um, any background noise. Like I don't know how to mute myself. I can't. Oh, okay. Um, just um, if you have your cursor, are you, did you see you're on, your, you're on a laptop, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if you just have your cursor on your wee um, video screen and you should, it should come oh, up yeah. mute. Yeah, got it. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for uh, joining. It's so nice to see people. <laughs> I just, just um, you know, every week that we go through this, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm okay, and then you know, I see people, and I'm like, oh, I actually really, really miss people. So I really appreciate everybody taking the time to, to, um, to come and join and learn. Um, so for anybody that doesn't know me, it's my uncle. <laughs> um, my name is Kirsty. I am a wellness advocate with Deterra and I have been for uh, about a year and a half now. Um, after suffering with my own health issues, I had a bit of a, a kind of light bulb moment um, and I realised that uh, there are actually, there are alternatives and there are other options for people. We don't have to, um, sometimes the doctor just doesn't always know best. So I started doing my own kind of research um, and I was looking and trying out different holistic therapies and I found essential oils and then found doTERRA and I haven't looked back since. Um, it's just been, um, it's, been a bit of a roller coaster actually it's just, it's been awesome um most people a lot of people that i've heard of anyway they start off um using the oils for themselves solely with the intention of just using the oils but i had um done a little bit of research and kind of listened to my gut um i got the the feeling um as soon as i started reading about them i just knew that um they were going to be a, a massive part of my life so I, I I went in with full intentions of um coming on board and, and joining the business I, I just wanted to use the oils for a while first to get to know them so that I could actually talk about them authentically I suppose um so through my research uh the one of the first major shocks for me that I discovered was that essential oils, um, a lot of the oils that we get in the shops and online are they're being sold as, as classed as pure but they're actually not. Um, a study that was done by the Aromatic Plant Research Centre shows that out of 50 different companies oils that they tested uh, there was only three that came back consistently pure, one of which was doTERRA, um, which means that 47 other companies who are selling pure essential oils actually aren't, which is quite scary. Um, so this brings me swiftly on to why we should use doTERRA. I'm just going to talk a little bit about doTERRA tonight. We've got a couple of new bees tonight, which is lovely. Um, so it gives me a, a perfect excuse to talk about Deterra again and why I think they're so amazing. Um, I know some of you have heard this before, but um, it's super important. I feel for people to, to 
understand the, the company, uh, Deterra as a company, and um, just a little bit about their ethics as well. So Deterra derives from the Latin for gifts of the earth, and they were founded in 2008 um, by a mix of healthcare and business specialists. Um, they all had a desire to bring to the world essential oils of such a purity that nobody would ever have to question them because it was so important to them. They obviously realised that the amount of um, synthetics and things that were being found in other companies' oils and, you know, purity is such an important thing to the Terra. Because there's no governing body overlooking essential oil companies, the Terra took it upon themselves to create their own standard. Um, so we have certified pure therapeutic grade, which is a standard that Deterra created for themselves as a kind of benchmark to test their oil's purity and potency. Um, I'm not going to go into the finer kind of details of it, but it's an extremely high standard to meet. Uh, so every batch of oil that they produce goes through a variety of different tests in the lab and they're also sent off for third party testing as well through um, the aromatic plant um, research company and yeah and they do their own tests in the lab as well um, and this ensures that their oils are pure and free from any contaminants fillers pesticides or any other kind of synthetics um, so around 70 to 80 percent of essential oils on the market nowadays are synthetically produced. As I mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, the APRC um, did some tests on essential oils from around 50 companies and only three came back consistently pure, which Indotero was one. Um, and as I said, many of these companies are companies advertising their oils as pure, which to me is it's just it's quite frightening actually um the fact that they can get away with doing that um sorry so there oh god i've lost my place now. um yeah so it, um just talking about uh purity and potency um transparency as well to tell are very transparent and there's a, a lovely little website called Source to You. Um, so you can actually, you can go onto the website and you can find out there's lots of lovely sourcing stories about where the oils are, are sourced from and, and the impact um, on the communities uh, that Deterra have created. And you can also put in, in, in the bottle of each little essential oil, there's there's a, a use by date and there's also a batch number and you can actually put the batch number on into the website and it tells you the, the kind of history of that oil and, and the testing, um, which is huge. There's not many companies, if any other companies that, that do that, they're so transparent. Um, which brings us now on to the sourcing of oils, which is hugely important. Um, the plants from where the oils come from, they're grown and harvested in their own natural environment, which is where they grow best and they're free from pesticides too. There's so many different factors that come into play um, for growing a plant optimally. So obviously their natural habitat is extremely important. The correct temperature, the climate, the, the soil, the microbes in the soil, um, time of day harvested, these all have a massive impact on the purity and the potency of an oil. So all these things are, are really important to Deterra to make sure that everything is, is just right. And Deterra also deal directly with the farmers and growers from all these little communities to ensure that there's no chance of any kind of contamination. Um, I'm just going to touch briefly on a couple of initiatives that Deterra run, which are the Healing Hands Foundation and the Co-Impact Sourcing Programme that they do. Co-Impact Sourcing is an, an initiative that Deterra use 
to seek out global locations that need a helping hand to break free from poverty while sourcing and producing purest essential oils. They source the, the plants for the oils, as I said, in their natural habitats. And these come from over 40 different countries ac across the world, many of which are developing countries. By sourcing the plants indigenously, there are huge benefits to, from a plant perspective, obviously, and also the local community. The local villages and communities benefit from having jobs such as farmers, distillers and harvesters created with ongoing training and support from doTERRA. Um, and they also ensure that people are treated and paid fairly, which means better livelihoods for many families to allow a better quality of life. And the other initiative that I wanted to touch on, and another reason that I'm so passionate about doTERRA, is the Healing Hands Foundation. This is a charity with a global impact which strives to empower communities globally and help them become self-reliant. And one of the um, one of the operations, the project that's going on, um, has been for some time is OUR, which stands for Operation Underground Railroad. This project brings together many experts from across the world to work with different governments to bring an end to child sex trafficking. Um, wellness advocates such as myself, we can do fundraising for the Healing Hands Foundation and Deterra will match every penny raised, which is just amazing. Um, so that's the introductions done. So we're going to um, move on to the class now, which is green cleaning. So what is green cleaning? Green cleaning literally just means using cleaning methods that are environmentally friendly. This can mean using cleaning products that avoid the use of toxic chemicals which means they're better for us, for our health, um, and for the planet. Or we can do cleaning in a way that reduces the amount of waste. And now that we're spending more time at home, I feel it's really crucial that we're aware of what's in our homes um, and what we're cleaning them with. So why do I green clean? I started looking at the ingredients on the back of um, various different products and wondering, you know, what do these names actually mean? What, what actually are they? Uh, so I started looking them up. Um, I, I think the product in particular that I was looking at was, um, it was a softener. And I was reading through the list of ingredients and I was looking them up and uh, so many of them were actually skin irritants and I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> this, this is something that we use on our clothes to, to make our clothes feel nice on our skin and to, to smell nice, but the ingredients, are, they're, they're really not good for us. Um, and I also was very aware um, when doing my cleaning, especially in the bathroom, when I'm cleaning the bath, you know, you're spray the bath and then I'm down in the bath scrubbing it and I'm coughing, coughing, coughing and thinking, you know, this isn't right and my hands are so dry and I thought, you know, I need to, again, I started asking questions thinking, this isn't right. <laughs> um, and it just made me stop and think, you know, also, if that's what it's doing to me, then what is it doing to our children? Um, for such a long time, you know, I just always, you know, I haven't asked any questions. I haven't thought, you know, why am I doing this? Why, why am I doing this coughing? I'm suffering every time I'm doing my cleaning. Uh, but I suppose for me, it was just kind of normal. It was just what you do, you know, you just, you do your cleaning and, and that's it kind of thing. You know, I've just kind of accepted that, you know, it's, it's normal that, you know, this uh, cleaning product makes me cough. It irritates my lungs. Um, you know, reading the back of, uh, various different products and there's all these warnings saying you know it can um, cause damage to your eyes if it ends up in your eyes and I actually kind of realised this isn't actually okay um, and also aside from that these chemicals that we're using to clean our homes with they end up in the water cycle and they're actually really harmful to aquatic life as well um, whatever we 
are using in our homes, as I said, you know, it's flushing down the drains and um, it has such a massive impact on sea life. And I just feel nowadays we really need to, to be aware and just do our little bit to try and help the environment. Um, so green cleaning is a, a great place to start. Um, it's kinder on the environment, as, as I just said. It also it reduces the amount of plastic bottles that we're using. Um, so we, I use glass bottles. We should always use glass when it comes to essential oils, whether it's um, if you're making up like a little roller bottle um, or cleaning products, we should always use glass. Um, green cleaning is natural and it's safe. Safe for us to breathe in and it actually can have a positive effect on us. Um, so the spray that I use for cleaning my kitchen and bathroom, which I'll share the recipe with you later, um, I, I quite often, it's never made the same way twice, and I quite often add peppermint to it. So it's actually, um, I'm actually experiencing the aromatic benefits as I'm doing my cleaning. Um, and you know, if you've got a wee blocked up nose or something, you know, it's actually easing the congestion and, you know, you're not going to get that from um, something that you buy in the supermarket. Um, why else? It's cost effective. I'll explain about that later. Um, but it, it, it is, at first glance, it, it seems, it can seem a bit expensive, but I'll, I'll explain all that later. Um, it's easy to do once you've uh, once you've made it a product once you know what you're doing and it's so much easier to do second time round um, and it's also powerful and effective. The um, constituents that make up an essential oil, the the properties that they have, so they're antimicrobial, antibacterial. These are actually the plant's defence or immune system that are used to, to make up an essential oil. So that's why they're so powerful and effective for, for cleaning our homes as well. Um, so the class is gonna take a bit of a, a, a dive down now. Um, it's not gonna be so cheery for a wee bit, but I promise it will get better. Um, when I started doing my research for this, I knew obviously through my own experiences that this is a massive subject, but um, yeah, I kind of realised exactly how huge it is. It's massive. I mean, I had to totally rein it in. I could talk for hours about um, all these nasty things that are in our products. So I feel like I maybe opened a can of worms for you or dangled the carrot. So feel free to do your own research as well, or, you know, come back to me if you have any further questions, I'm happy to, to share my findings as well. Um, so I'm going to um, talk about what to look out for in the ingredients list. And as I said, it's a massive topic. So I've picked out four um, different things to look at because there's, like I said, there's so many. Um, so I picked out just four. So we are looking to avoid anything that has perfume or fragrance in the list of ingredients. These cover a multitude of sins. Anything that um, anything that has perfume or fragrance, um, it can be made up of literally hundreds of different chemicals and the manufacturers don't actually have to disclaim or disclose the ingredients that make up this fragrance. Um, and one, um, a, a bubble bath that we use for Ollie, um, I actually looked, so there's a couple of different websites that you can use. Think Dirty is one, there's an app and there's also um, EWG as well, which is the Environmental Working Group. You can put in the ingredients or you can actually put in the, like the name of the product and it'll bring up like on Think Dirty, the product that we use um, claims to be good for eczema and um, for children. And, you know, it's really good and nourishing for their skin, but actually um, it didn't rate too highly on Think Dirty and it was because of the, the perfume 
perfume, perfume. Um, that that was fair. It lost most of the other ingredients were fine. It was the the perfume that was in it because you just don't know. You just don't know what's what's in that. Um, the next one is bleach. Uh, bleach can cause respiratory issues more so in children. It's a obviously a known skin irritant. If you get that on your hand, you're you know you want to wash it off as quickly as possible. Um, when it's mixed with other cleaners or other other products, it can it can produce very toxic results as well. And chlorine gas can be formed if bleach comes into contact with ammonia and vinegar. So it's really not something that we want to be using. And it's only it's only been a, a very recent change that we have made. I've always known that um, not I haven't wanted to use it, but I just had to find an alternative. And even Ollie, he doesn't like it. He can't stand the smell of bleach. You can always smell it's like mummy. Don't like that. So you know, I, sh I should have know. I should know. Listen to your children. They always know best. Um, another one is triclosan. Triclosan is an antifungal and antibacterial agent, which is found in detergents, in toothpaste, um, various other uh, products as well. And on the Environmental Working Group website, triclosan gets rated a big fat red F. It's really not good at all. It shows up as being very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects too. So as I said, the Environmental Working Group is a website and they have an app as well, but, and it rates products and ingredients and just kind of generally provides information to help us live healthier, um, a healthier, cleaner life. The best rate in, that a product can get on the EWG website would be the EWG verified stamp, which means it, it meets the strictest standards for health and transparency. And it then goes from A to F, A being the lowest concern with few or no suspected hazards, to F being the highest concern. So anything with triclosan in it, you really want to avoid it. Um, and lastly, phthalates. Phthalates are chemicals that keep plastic, soft and flexible and just kind of prevent it from becoming brittle. Phthalates are found in cosmetics, in perfume, nail polish, soap, shampoo and moisturisers. They're also found in insecticides, adhesives, wood finishes, medical tubing and fluid bags and vinyl flooring. Um, they're also found in some foods, especially meat and dairy and fast foods. Um, due to the animals having come in, co in contact with something and also from the packaging um, of some foods as well. Um, phthalates, triclosan, are their endocrine disrupting chemicals that are found, as we know, in everyday products. So research shows that endocrine disruptors have been linked to male and female reproductive disorders. They can cause different types of cancer, endometriosis, immune disorders, amongst many, many other conditions and illnesses. And these chemicals can also increase the production of certain hormones. They can decrease other hormones as well, causing quite a huge imbalance. They can also imitate hormones and accumulate in organs that produce hormones, so they're really, really nasty. Uh, sometimes exposure to these chemicals, even in really tiny amounts, can have a massive impact. But unfortunately, on occasion, the results might not show for years. Um, so due to this, it's really, it's really difficult to kind of link the cause and effect and prove that this is what's had caused whatever illness. And the, the ma manufacturers quite often will argue that these chemicals are harmless in such small amounts. But if we're being exposed to them time and time again, and in various different combinations that perhaps haven't been studied as well, there's just there's no telling what they can, what damage they can cause. And I, for one, um, I just don't want to take that risk. Not anymore. Not now that I know that there are other alternatives. Uh, but don't worry. You don't have to rush off and empty your cupboards and chuck everything out because I don't actually know what we would do with it all. We've actually got. Um, 
like a box under our sink with all our cleaning products in it because I, I don't know I don't know how to dispose of them <laughs> so they're, they're under the sink um, gathering dust I suppose um, but this is all about living a wellness lifestyle so it's not an overnight fix it's all about making conscious small affordable changes one step at a time as I said we still use products in our daily lives that make me cringe but I'm happy or happier knowing that we can make a change so you know if something runs out then um then we'll just replace it with uh, something that's a bit less toxic so our helpful hints and tips um my notes aren't showing up for this so i'm gonna have to try and read this tiny little writing um as i said always use glass bottles um the Essential oils can uh, weaken plastic, so you always want to use essential oil um, glass bottles when you're making up products with essential oils. Um, you're better to try and use darker glass. So the little bottle I showed you, that's a nice blue one. You can get lots of lovely colours, but um, you do get some clear bottles as well, which is okay, but you're better um, with a darker colour because it, it protects the oil from the sun. Um, always shake your cleaning products uh, before use just in case the, the ingredients have kind of settled a little bit and um, just to ensure it's all well mixed. It's also a good idea to test new products on an out of, out of sight area first just in case. I've never had any issues with anything that I've used um, but it's always better to be safe. The, I'm going to share some recipes and these are all totally interchangeable i mean they're, they're very um what's the word they're, they're personal so you know what i like to smell you, you might not like smelling so um it's oh, a word i was trying to think of um and another wee handy tip is to reuse so wash and reuse little glass jars or uh, glass bottles you can use as well um, for storing stuff in. Um, yeah. So some basic essentials that we will need to make our green cleaning products. Vinegar, uh, white vinegar is a, a great um, product to have. It's an antifungal and it has antibacterial properties as well. So it can be used to clean and kill mould in the home. Baking soda, um, which is actually bicarbonate of soda in the UK, uh, is a mild abrasive which helps to neutralise odours. Uh, citric acid, this is an acid compound which is actually found in citrus fruits and it kills bacteria, mould and mildew. Castile soap is a vegetable based soap free from animal from animal fats and synthetic ingredients. So it's non-toxic and it's available in bar or liquid form. It originates from the Spanish city of Castile, hence the name, and it dates back to the 12th century when it was originally made with olive oil. Uh, and there's just so many different ways that we can use four simple ingredients. Uh, one other, a uh, staple for me is the on guard cleaner concentrate which I have down here and um, so this is a product that doTERRA make and um, it contains doTERRA's on guard protective blend of wild orange, rosemary, clove, cinnamon and eucalyptus and the cleaner concentrate is free from artificial ingredients and is a great base for many cleaning products. And again, yeah, I've just added in there about the empty glass and jars, empty glass jars and bottles are really handy for storing any products that you make um, or making up your cleaning solutions in. I'm just going to share the recipes now that I was talking about. Does anybody have any questions or anything to add in? No. Okay, so um, I'm going to run through these, but if you um, if you don't manage to get everything, just contact me after the class, and I can um, I can share the recipes with you. 
So the toilet pods are something that I made recently. Um, so for these we need uh, bicarbonate soda, which that's mine, which I got from, um, goodness, I got it from Nason, sorry, I can't remember. I got my Castile soap from there too. Um, I'll give you the links to the websites as well. Um, we have citric acid, which is this. So it's a powder, it's a white powder. Comes, it's got a nice, uh, safe screw top on it. Um, and also purify, which I didn't get out. Um, so that is purify there. So Purify is the cleansing blend from doTERRA. Um, so what you would do, you combine the bicarbonate soda and the citric acid in a bowl, mixing together, slowly stir in the Castile soap and the Purify essential oil and mix it all together until it resembles a wet candy sand consistency and then these are the moulds that I use, little silicon moulds. So this one has 15 little hearts in it. And I actually needed to, I bought this one, not realising how big it was going to be, which is why I then bought that. But I actually ended up using two of these as well with that recipe. And so it does make quite a lot. Um, so then you just, you would just pop one of them down the toilet and just leave it for a wee bit to, um, to bubble away, I usually leave it for about five or ten minutes, um, and then uh, use a toilet brush to clean it. But it's been a bit of a, a bone of contention for me because I threw the toilet brush out a few years ago because I, I didn't like them because <laughs> I felt I was a bit yucky. Um, but then we weren't using the bleach, and I thought, well, how else am I going to clean the toilet? I'm going to make something to clean it, but what am I going to clean it with? So I had to buy a toilet brush again. Um, so I'm, I still feel a bit funny about using it, but I did some research. I found one on Amazon that's it's a silicon head and um, the handle twists off, so you can actually you could buy a new one eventually if you need to. But it's it's supposed to be antibacterial and it's got a wee um, the wee uh, container that sits in it air dry. So apparently there's no nastiness i'm still not totally convinced but um so far it's working out and the toilet pods are working out great as well so <laughs> i'm just going to keep going with it for the time being see how we get on uh, this is a fruit and veg wash so we fill the sink with cold water add five drops of lemon five drops of on guard and you leave to soak for 10 minutes so you can add in all your fruit and veg and this is a great way to, if, if you don't buy organic, it's a, a great way to remove any kind of residual um, dirt or, you know how sometimes apples, they have that kind of waxy feeling, don't they? Um, or any pesticides that have been left behind. Um, and it, the fruit doesn't, um, or the veg, it doesn't, it doesn't flavour it at all. I just always give them a wee dry before I put them in the fruit bowl or back in the fridge. Um, and these are all great as well because the, the children can help. Oh, he loves helping. He loves helping clean. And, you know, I feel so much happier knowing that he can help and, you know, he's not breathing in any... Let's go open that um, Any of these horrible noxious fumes. Uh, next we have uh, one for the children which I kind of uh, discovered quite by accident actually. Um, so all these nursery I've been doing little, uh, sending us little um, activities for them to do and we were looking for one of them, we didn't have everything that we needed so we came up with this. Um, but it actually uses the ingredients that I used to put down the drains, to clear the drains. So, all I did is we thing with the bicarbonate soda. So we had the bicarbonate soda in the wee, I would just use a cake tin. Um, and he did the wee dots of food colour and then put the vinegar on and all kind of puffs up and foams and he was loving it. And then he mixed it all together and it made this kind of paste. And, I, and then I realised, I was like, I use these for, for unblocking the drains. So um, 
So they then went round the house and the kitchen and the bathroom and the sink and, and the bath and put it down and sure enough, um, not that the drains were really dirty, but it definitely noticed a difference. It, it, they were much more free flowing. So um, it's a nice way to get the kids involved as well. Okay, and lastly is the multi-purpose spray, which like Blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. So this is my little glass bottle. So this is a 240ml bottle. Uh, so we need two tablespoons of the on guard concentrate. And I use about 20 drops of essential oil. As I say, that changes every time I make it. Um, depending on um, citrus oils are good for if for cutting through grease. So if something's really greasy, um, or obviously really nice uplifting smells as well. I always have peppermint in. Um, what else do I use? Spearmint, I use spearmint sometimes, or tang tangerine is another citrus. Um, so what you do is you just put your concentrate in here. I've, I've got a little funnel that I use to, um, to help put it in. And then you just slowly fill it with water. You don't want the water going in too fast because then it all kind of bubbles up and you know you have to wait for all the, the foam to settle. Um, and this is my favourite green cleaning recipe because this bottle I use it to clean the kitchen, so everything in the kitchen. I use it for doing my dusting now. Um, I have two cloths that I use for my dusting. So I, I use one to wipe off all the dust, <laughs> and then I spray, and then I use the other cloth to, to clean and dry it all. Um, and I, I make up one of these to clean the bathroom as well. Um, for the bathroom one, I put three tablespoons of the on guard cleaner in two, maybe two and a half to three, um, just because it, it makes me feel better. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's it's great, it's, it saves money um, on buying all these different products for cleaning. So you, you'd use um, something for a spray for your kitchen or something for your hob or for around the sink a bath cleaner, a bathroom cleaner, um, so you're saving money on all of them and reducing your toxic load as well. So it's a win-win. Um, so I put the price here for um, how much it costs to make it. It looks a bit shocking at first because <laughs> when I first worked it all out and I thought I can't, I can't tell that to people because people are going to look and be like, Fifty pounds to make a bottle of spray—that's ridiculous. <laughs> but it's actually not as—it's not as scary as that. So there's two prices um, there. So there's wholesale prices and retail prices. So if you don't have a wholesale account, um, you would pay retail prices, or you can open up a wholesale account. And uh, the the best saving for me is you, you save twenty five percent off the cost of retail. But I always just like to have both prices as a comparison. So the bottle itself costs two pound forty. The cleaner concentrate, um, I'm going to use the wholesale prices. So that's thirteen twenty five. Um, the peppermint essential oil was sixteen seventy five, and the lemon essential oil was nine pounds twenty five. So altogether, but at wholesale prices, that would cost forty one pounds sixty five pence. That's um, if you're for if you're a complete beginner. If you don't have any of these oils, then that would be an initial outlay. But there's always going to be an initial outlay when you're new to essential oils or green cleaning. Um, the bonuses are that this bottle will last you for absolutely months and months. Um, the spray will last you for not quite as long, but you, you're going to be able to refill this yourself. Um, the oils that you're going to get, well, I use the peppermint and lemon as an example, but you could use loads of different oils. Um, peppermint you can use for um, any tummy upsets. It's, it has, um, it's a, has anti-inflammatory properties. 
uh, it's good for headaches, uh, lemon is good for cleaning, it's good for removing sticky marks. I take lemon in my water every morning um, to give my digestive system a kind of kickstart and it, it helps your body get rid of any toxins that are building up. Um, there's so many different uses for the oils and the oils come in uh, the, where's my camera? the 15 mil size. Um, so in this bottle, there's about 250 drops. So these, the, even the, the bottles of oil are going to last for ages. So although it looks like it's a massive cost, it's a kind of one-off because you know you're going to have all the products that you 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 need for ages, for absolute ages. And I did work out the cost that it would be to refill your bottle as well. Um, so I had to work out the price per drop of the essential oil and work out the price of this per tablespoon as well, which I did this morning and I just started my period last night. So, you know, I was actually very pleased with myself that I managed that. <laughs> um, so it actually would cost, retail price, it would cost £3.20 to refill this or £2.44 um, at wholesale prices if you're buying your stuff um, through your account. Um, so, yes, whilst there's an initial outlay, um, like to refill this, it's totally affordable. Um, plus, you get all the other benefits. It's toxin free, kind to the environment. It's kind to to your family and home. It smells amazing, and this one will help unblock your nose as well. So, you know, it's a win-win. I say. Um, and here, I just wanted to add in some essential oils, some antibacterial oils. I had to rein it in again because there are so many, so many. Um, so take a few notes, but if you don't manage to get them all, um, I can send you, just contact me after the class and I can send you um, some further information. Um, I also have this handy little sheet. Uh, which products do you use? So it's got lots of little tick boxes on it. Um, so if you're looking to replace like your, I don't know if you can see that, no, it's probably not going to be legible. Um, so it says here household, so you've got air freshener, bathroom cleaner, diffuser for essential oils, floor cleaner, kitchen cleaner, blah, blah, blah. So you just tick it. Um, if you want one, contact me and I'll send you one out. And you can tick it and then it has a wee carbon copy on the back and it tells you the deterra um, alternatives that you can make the swap to, which is uh, great. It's very handy. And lastly, I just wanted to tell you about some offers that we have on at the moment. So for anybody that hasn't tried and would like to try some oils, there's um, contact me and I can send you some samples out. Um, this month, um, if you process Put in a 50 PV or more order, so PV is product volume, um, and it kind of so 50 PV equates to roughly about 50 pounds, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less. Um, with any 50 PV order, I am gifting a Melaleuca or a lavender touch roller bottle. So these come, the touch range is a range that um, Duterra do, and they come in these little roller bottles. And the touch range is pre-diluted. Um, when we're using essential oils on our skin, it's always wise to use a carrier oil and dilute it just to prevent any kind of uh, skin sensitivity. So the touch range comes pre-diluted. So they're really handy to have in your bag and they're great for using out on the, on the go. Um, so I'm gifting either a Melaleuca or a Lavender Touch, whatever you would like. Um, this month, there's also a, an offer on through one of my colleagues. Um, if you are open up an account with a 100 PV order, you'll get the um, Melaleuca or Lavender Touch for free, and you'll also get a bottle of uh, Past Tense, which I have one here. And um, there, so this comes in a roller bottle as well. This one isn't diluted. But what I do is I split it between another roller bottle and I top them both up with fraction eight coconut oil. So you then get two because you should always dilute your um, 
oils for topical use. Um, past tense is the tension blend, so this is great for headaches and migraines. Um, it's nice to roll on like the back of your neck and your shoulders to relieve any kind of tension. It contains wintergreen, peppermint, lavender, cilantro, marjoram, Roman chamomile, frankincense, basil, and rosemary. Um, so all of these oils are like it just it smells amazing. Um, I actually used it today for my period pain because it was the first thing that <laughs> I um, got my hands on. But the, the thing is with essential oils, each oil has so many different properties. There's so many different ways. So although this is the tension blend, you know, it, it's not just necessarily for your head. It's you know muscular. Yeah, but they're very um, adaptable. Um, yeah, so I mentioned about wholesale prices. If you wanted to open up a wholesale account, it's £24 for a year's membership, um, which gives you then access to the 25% um, off the cost of retail and loads of other benefits too. And upon so that's a yearly membership, but upon renewal, you get a free bottle of peppermint oil sent out to you. Um, as always, if you did want to make an order and your oils arrive, um, we will have a, a wellness consultation. We'll go through any kind of um, key aspects in, within your health and wellness, any areas that you feel like you want to cover. And I will also teach you how to use your oils. And I'm always available for um, for yourselves, uh, any family or friends that you might have that feel could benefit um, well, a wellness consultation or um, one to one to one appointments. If there's something that you know you feel you could use a little help with, um, and that is me done. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So I can see you all again. That's better. <laughs> uh, let me just close that. There we are. Thank you. You're all still here. That's good. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or anything that you'd like to add in? Just feel free to unmute yourself. Um, oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it was just, um, I think you said you'd send on enemy, but it was just a link, um, if you can send, where you get your, what's it called, the, the soap thing that you get in the oh, bag? The, the Castile soap. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just so that's uh, mine. So I've got the liquid one, um, but apparently you can get in a bar form as well. Um, but I got that from Nathan's, but I'll send you. Let's make a note. What's it called? Nasons. Nasons. It's N A I S S A N C E. Nasons dot com, I think. And they have um, they have loads of um, they have fractionated coconut oil. They have loads of different carrier oils. Um, well. They're great in Nason stuff. It's oh, okay, like cool. It. Yeah. Yeah, they've got loads of different things as well, don't they? They do, they do, lots of different things, but yeah, they're great, great mm -hmm. prices and great, great quality. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the decent yeah. that I got my uh, baking soda from, my carbonate soda, I'm not American. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> I got mine from there too. Is it a specific yeah. in your glass bottles or does that not really matter? Where... Um, I wouldn't say so. I always... Or just off, I think it was just off Amazon, but I didn't have the rest of these grey ones. I need to have a look for them. I always pretty much always use um, essential oil supplies. Um, so that's the website, obviously. Um, and I use them. You can get them on Amazon though, but I just find, um, I think on Amazon, the, the few times that I have looked, I find the prices were slightly higher. Um, but that obviously doesn't apply to everything. So um, there's also essent oils, which is E S S E N T O I L S. Um, I think that's .co.uk. 
Um, they have a sale on at the moment, so they have a buy one get one free sale. So they have um, little packs of roller bottles. They have nice, nice coloured ones. Um, I don't have any at hand. Um, so they have a pack of five. Um, you can get different ones actually, but they have um, roller bottles. There's different books. Books are amazing if you're using essential oils. I always highly suggest getting a book. Um, so they have books on offer at the moment. Um, there's a diffuser that they have, um, and that's where I got these um, little sheets from. Um, so yeah, that's a good one to have a look at as well. I think you've probably told me about it, or I think maybe when I first joined, someone told me about it. Is there an app that you that you have as well that you can pay? I think you have to pay for it. But yeah, there's loads for essential oils. Do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where's my phone? There is actually a so one of the books that's really good that I would recommend is Modern Essentials. Um, and there actually is a Modern Essentials app. I think it's probably about the only one that I don't have. Um, there's a couple of Deterra ones. Um, there's one called Essential Life, which is really good. That's definitely a paid for one, but I think it's only about three or four pounds, not much. Um, but an app is really good as well for if you're out and about and you know, somebody asks you something. Uh -huh. um, yeah, there's... Don't know if you can see. Uh, just so you know what you're looking for, the kind of logos. Um, yeah, they're handy, really handy. Anything else? Kirsty, how did you spell that nuisance again? It's N-A-I. N A I double S A N C E and I think it's dot com. Yeah, that's fine, that's I spelled it wrong, that's why I couldn't. Oh, okay. Right. right, okay. Right. Anything else? Anything like any other Unrelated oil questions are. See the the me we cure or whatever it is. Is me, that, me, is that yeah, tea tea, uh -huh. ah, That's fine. I thought it was. <laughs> but I have to check. <laughs> yeah, it's just um. So I think in in the states, I think it's called tea tea in Europe. It's melica. Um, I don't know why it's. Why it's different. There's quite a few things that are named differently be between uh, Europe and the States, right. just to add confusion, I think. Good for headlines. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes it is. You can, um, you can put it in your shampoo or you can make up oh, a no, I just put it straight in solution. <laughs> 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 it's not too much. <laughs> Yeah, see, I don't know what you've used in the past, but uh, did Hera, you would only need a couple of drops. Yeah. You could add in um, lavender as well. Well, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Well, thank you very much. It's been great. Really enjoyed it. Glad, glad, glad. Thank glad you enjoyed. Thank you, I enjoyed it too. First Good. one. <laughs> Yes, well done. I'm so glad. I'm so proud of you. This is Mandy Carroll, everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> She's made it. If you want to read it as well, a bit. <laughs> kind of struggle a wee bit with technology at times. Yeah. <laughs> I get there. You do. You do. I, think um, I don't know how I might. Oh, yeah. Before I met, before we started. <laughs> I just, I just answered it and I thought, I wonder if you just maybe done it by accident. <laughs> I'll get there. Yeah.